Shockwave uses genetic manipulation to turn Bomb Shock into an unstoppable monster. My zone guard. Risque de te fumer, petit pissier, de conci au enfant de moi, de toi en zaza. I know French. French is cool. And welcome back to E Before I Video Reviews. Today we're taking a look at Transformers, Beast Hunters, Predacons Rising, Bomb Shock, and Shockwave. Now these are both repaints of previously released figures. Bomb Shock of Hard Shell and Shockwave of Shockwave. One of these looks super cool in the box. The other one looks maybe slightly unnecessary, but I might change my opinion once we open it. The box itself is all kinds of messed up, so let's take a quick look. As you can see, it's an exclusive only at Target, at least here in the United States. The weird part here is that you've got the Decepticon symbol on Bombshock, who's a Predacon now, as you can see his Predacon symbol there, and the Predacon symbol on the Shockwave side, and he's a Decepticon. So that doesn't make any sense. If I turn this over on the side of the Decepticon, again, this is on Bombshock's side, but it does say Shockwave right there on the bottom, and so these are Shockwave's tech specs. On the other side, again, the Predacon, and you flip it over on the side of Shockwave, and now I've got Bomb Shock's tech spec. So it's all kind of reversed and weird. On the back of the box, you've got the level of transformation being number one easy, pictures in both modes of both figures, and a whole bunch of different languages. On the bottom of the box, there's nothing exciting except your proof of purchase, and that's really it. Before we get these guys open, let's go ahead and read the tech specs. Shockwave strength is an 8, his intelligence is a 10, speed is a 5, endurance is 7, rank an 8, courage is 6, fire blast a 10, and skill is a 6. Bomb shocks, strength is a 9, intelligence an 8, speed of 4, endurance an 8, rank a 7, courage a 5, fire blast 6, and skill is a 6. So outside of the fact that the figures should probably have been reversed in packaging, the box looks okay, let's go ahead and get it opened up and see if this Target exclusive is worth your time and your parents' money. Or maybe yours. Maybe your neighbor's. Maybe Lionel Richie's. All right, here they are out of the box. And all in all, it's not that bad for a couple of straight-up repaints. Uh, pretty decent if you like these figures to begin with. If you didn't like them, nothing here is going to sell you on it, in my opinion. Let's take a quick look at them individually, starting with... Shockwave. Shockwave is a bit of a mixed bag for me because very similar to the Cyberverse Megatron, uh, you know, he's he's a good figure in robot mode. In vehicle mode, you know, you kind of look at it and go, well, why, why would I ever transform this? Looking at him a bit closer, you know, I hate to talk about toys and say, you know, well, for a Cyberverse figure, blah, 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 blah. I get it. You know, these aren't meant to be as detailed and as articulated as their deluxe and Voyager counterparts, but that doesn't mean that you can't design a good Cyberverse scale figure. And to me, this vehicle mode is just sort of okay. You know, it kind of looks like the show a little bit. Uh, you know, there's lots of weird things going on underneath. Uh, in a way, it's kind of similar to the Voyager scale look, and that had some problems as well. But uh, this one just doesn't quite cut it for me. The top weapon gets pegged in, so there's not really any movement unless you unpeg it. And if you do unpeg it, then you can get some movement, but then it just kind of looks goofy. You know what I mean? Looking at the colors, you've got the uh, pink look on the shield on the top. And you know, it might look silly on this review, but uh, in person, when you don't have the bright lights on it, it's actually not a terrible look. Outside of that, you've got some of the pink paint, as I mentioned. The weapon itself is not painted. Purple here, purple black, and a little bit of darker gray. You've got the darker gray wheels as well. The light gray in here. Some silver paint that we'll talk more about in robot mode. The treads, which aren't really treads, but, you know, they look pretty decent. Underneath, it's just, you know, as I mentioned, it's weird. And that's pretty much his vehicle mode. Now, to transform him, it's relatively simple. And I guess you'll start by just unpegging this piece right there. 
you can grab this whole arm and just sort of pull it. And what you'll do is you'll get this arm, this whole shoulder bit, just kind of pull it like that and get it into position. Now the other arm is behind him. So you're just going to take that, unpeg it, bring it all the way back around, flip him over again. You want to reach into what will be his head. Just pull it back up like that. Take these side pieces and you want to close these up, which basically forms the side of the chest. Come down here to the bottom and finish the rest of it. And it's on a dual hinge and you just pull it up and kind of snap it into place like that. You're really just about done. You take the legs and you straighten it out. You turn it and you push this whole little foot piece down to form the leg. Do the same thing, rinse and repeat on the other side. Get everything straightened out. Turn the arm, come around to the back, take these treads, pull them down. And with a little luck, these pieces right here will be sticking up. And if not, we'll just pull them out. And from that point, you're ready to stand him up, pose him up. Well, let's face it, there's only so much posing you're gonna be able to do with this guy. But all in all, his robot mode really shines. Taking a closer look at that. The head sculpt on Shocky Baby's not that bad. It's pretty good, actually. I mean, it's just a chunk of purple plastic with some of the uh, silver tips up on top. And then the single paint blob for what the uh, Cyclops eye would be. Pink Decepticon symbol. Okay, kind of purple pink. You have pink right here in the shoulders for uh, some of the paint trim. Pink there in the chest. You do have that silver that I mentioned earlier right there, and that's actually a pretty nice contrast. The legs themselves, you know, you've got the unpainted plastic bits there. The purple bit right there looks pretty good, and then you've got the dark contrast on the feet. So all in all, that's kind of nice. Now his weapon is a pressure-sensitive release, and basically all you do is you take this whole deal and you push it forward and the missile shoots out. It's actually not that bad. Considering it's a friction or pressure launcher, it, uh, it gets the job done fairly well with no springs inside. Doing the 360 around the figure as I spin him around, you see that, you know, Kibble's actually at a fair minimum. It's not really that bad at all. Articulation, there's no head movement, there's no waist movement. The arm here is on a swivel. You got a ball joint right there under the shoulder, a ball joint for the elbow. There's no hand articulation. Ball joint in the leg, hinge knee, and some foot movement, but nothing that really helps him stand. Well, I shouldn't say that too much. You might get a little bit of foot pivot on that. Ah, oh, bomb shock. All right, so I wasn't the biggest fan of hard shell. Now, this is a straight-up repaint, so I suppose I should feel the same way about this figure as I did hard shell. That being said, I don't know if I've mellowed over the past couple of months or the colors just do it a bit different, but I actually don't hate this version of the figure. Again, there's no real differences. It's the same basic figure as, as what you saw with Hard Shell. In fact, uh, there he is. But he's got a different color scheme, and to me, he's a, just kind of a bit more fun looking that way. Taking a closer look. So he's a Predacon now, but he still, you know, retains, again, straight repaint, so it's his beetle mode. And uh, he's still got that long horn kind of hook to it, which uh, there's a certain beetle type in. Y'all were great. You told me what the name of this was called in the last review, and I've completely forgotten, so maybe you can remind me again. But uh, a very neat look. Uh, the mouth still opens and shuts, so that's very cool. I mean, in the way that's painted, it's almost got a silvery gold tint to it, and the, the teeth look real nice. One of the complaints I had with Hard Shell is that the bottom jaw and the top weren't the same color, and here... At least you've got the same color with the teeth and the top bit itself. The eyes in bug mode are just really cool red. I don't know if you can see that under my lights here. I think you can. But uh, that looks fantastic. Then you've got the kind of teal looking blue here. Yellow paint up on top. And then the uh, blue and green theme throughout the rest of the figure. And again, he's got that same type of friction launcher. And really, to launch it, you just stick your thumb back here and you push it in. The slow motion, what will happen is it'll uh, fling toward your face like this. And if you have your 3D glasses on, it's still not going to be 3D because this isn't a 3D film. Did you get the idea? So, uh, you know, that's the deal with that. Now, the figure itself, the transformation on this guy is actually not bad. It's pretty cool. To get him into his robot mode, you basically want to come around here and uh, just kind of get the wings up and out of the way. Flip him upside down. These are actually his hands. So you pull these out. You come back here and you separate this, and you just basically stretch out the legs and pivot the foot. 
stretch, and pivot. You want to come up to the top and you want to take these little shoulder bits, or that what become the shoulder bits, just kind of pull them out. You want to stick your hand uh, on the crotch piece. You want to just pull this whole bit down so that you get them just like that. And then you take this back bit and you spin it, all right? And then you take this whole little long thing right here and you push it down like that. Then you can take the uh, the beast bits, the uh, the bug hands, and you kind of put that up against his back. You want to flip them around, and at this point, you can take the wings and just kind of, again, get them out of the way. The head, if it were up, you just go ahead and put that back down. Take these shoulder bits and just kind of lift them around. They're on a, a dual hinge. Hinge there, hinge there, hinge there, and just kind of bring it up to the front. Collapse the forearm together. Twist so that you build decent-looking arms out of it. And at that point, you're ready to stand him up, pose him up. And again, I have no rational explanation for this whatsoever, but I don't hate this version. Bomb Shock is okay by me. I like his face, like the paint used there, you got red in the eyes. I like a good Predacon symbol, he's got that purple right there. Uh, green plastic for the chest, yellow trim all the way around, including up on the shoulders. And then basically the green and the, the teal blue. And you know, in theory, these colors should be terrible together, but just something about this works for me. Here he is next to Hardshell, and although Hardshell is fairly color accurate to the TV show, um, you know, he just always kind of, the figure just kind of bored me. That is strictly a personal preference, and it's, well, it's my preference, so of course it's right. But of course I won't fault you if you like this guy better. So anyway, that's my take here with Bomb Shock. He's, he's actually a pretty, pretty decent repaint of a figure that I wasn't crazy about originally, but uh, this one again, I'm okay. So should you or shouldn't you, you're strolling down your local Target, you see this two-pack or wherever store you're at, you see these two, should you or should you not get them? And I say, if you're into Cyberverse Commander figures and you happen to like repaints, then it's a no-brainer, pick these up. If you don't like Cyberverse, I don't think either one of these are going to change your mind. These are both decent in robot mode. This guy's great in his, uh, in his beast mode. Shockwave's vehicle mode is iffy. But uh, all in all, if you're a fan of the Cyberverse series, and you haven't been completely ruined and sick of repaints in general, or perhaps you never had either one of these two and you're looking to pick them up, by all means, go ahead. I don't think either one of them will do you that wrong. So that was my review. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget, we still have contests going. Get these guys out of the way. We're still giving away Masterpiece MP15 uh, Rumble and Ravage. It's the Takara Tomei's Masterpiece series. My contest, which I'll link to at the bottom description of this video, will give you all the instructions on how to enter. And uh, I'll tell you, the response to this has been great. Keep them coming, and uh, we'll be giving this away uh, hopefully sooner than later. So thanks again for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you. We'll see you back here again real soon. Hello. Is it me you're looking for? Oh.